Thank you, Fabian. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Gerhard, for the invitation. I think it is more than or almost 10 years ago that I was a participant in this course. And you will see in another or 10 more years, you will present. So I'm very happy to see you all here. And welcome also to the listeners in at the screen. So the task I would like to present is the LEMG of the thyroid muscle. And what Fabian already mentioned is that it is very important to consider the time course of a paralysis. When you decide to perform a, an LEMG, you have to consider the time point of the beginning of the damage. Because this is very important um, regarding what you can expect from the EMG. Usually we do not perform EMG within the first two weeks. Usually you have a damage, a surgery, whatever you have a healing. So there's a high level of discomfort even from the patient's point of view. After a few weeks, meanwhile, we perform the LEMG after two weeks of the damage. After period of time, you can expect the spontaneous activity. You can expect maybe regeneration potentials or pathologic um, signals. And over time, and this depends on the location of the damage, you can expect synkinetic renovation. Of course, if you have a neck surgery, this might happen earlier than in case of having thoracic surgery. Yeah, so this is very important, time, location, and the interpretation. I heard, again, the opinion, it is hard to identify the muscle, it is hard to find the muscle. I always say, your fingers are the most uh, important supporter because you can palpate the neck. You have to palpate the neck, you have to find uh, the, the, uh, the ring or the, the, the shape of the arc of the cricoid. You have to palpate the articulation, the joint between the thyroid and the cricoid. And you can even find easily the superior notch of the thyroid. And if you have these landmarks in your fingers, then it's much easier to identify the muscles. Because direction, position, it is very, very helpful to know the three-dimensional um, situation of the larynx. If you have a neck like this, then it is very easy to identify the anatomical landmarks. Here it is very easy to identify the superior notch, easily to find the lower rim of the thyroid, the cricoid, and then the cricothyroid membrane. When we do the TA LEMG, then usually we do the EMG from anterior, so we just pass the cricothyroid ligament to reach the TA muscle. To make it more comfortable for the patients, we recommend to take the time for local anesthesia. We inject prilocaine hydrochloride xylanes 2% with epinephrine, or you can even take lidocaine just to give a more comfortable feeling for the patients. The patient will never be free of any feelings, so you cannot avoid little pain if you enter the uh, endolarynx. But because you have to insert the needle usually several times, it gives more or the, the better feeling for the patients. So if you have done like this, then of course we start to find the TA and I would even say TA-LCA complex. It is very helpful if you follow uh, the recommendations given by Fabian and all the co-workers here in this publication in 2012. You did a great job to explain how to localize the TA, the ACA, the CT, the PCA, and also the interarytenoid muscle. And if you follow these recommendations, then you might be successful to be in the right muscle. Sometimes uh, the, the shape of the, the 
thyroid can vary. So you have to even consider the shape and the angle here, angle here, how to insert the needle 15, 16, 70 degree. And if you go from paramedian up, or if you go from median more to the lateral part, this is sometimes uh, depending from the anatomical situation of the patient. What is very important and what makes it easier, if you try to stay uh, in the tissue, sometimes you just enter, you insert the needle and you just pass the, the membrane and then you go back to the vocal cord. Usually this causes a strong coughing. And that's why we usually go a little bit of paramedian position and then upwards. This is more comfortable for the patient and you can avoid the coughing. Yeah, so, and you ha also have to consider if you come from here with your needle and you go up, you have sometimes even return the direction of the tip of the needle, because if you want to reach the anterior part of the TA muscle, then you have to go straight up with the needle. Sometimes I, I even bind uh, the, the, the needle so that I have a returning curve of the path of the needle. And if you want to reach the LCA, because the, these both, both mothers can uh, um, provide different uh, signals, then you go a bit in a different angle to reach the LCA muscle. So, and again, my patient, here you see even uh, sex differences, age differences, you see that the shape can be completely different. I always use this neck because it is so obvious, And but I have to mention this was one of my few patients. I could not perform the EMG because when he saw my needle, he collapsed. <laughs> so, but if you have a neck like this, then you cannot see the landmarks. Here you need to palpate, you need to feel, and you can even do uh, the EMG in these necks. Yeah, but you have to consider the shape, the dimension of the laryngeal skeleton. If you inserted the needle, then it, you can leave it like it is. If the patient does not swallow, you can just put the needle, take your hands away, and then you try to, uh, to, to stimulate the patient to follow the agonistic and antagonistic maneuvers. Fabian mentioned our agonistic maneuver for the TALCA. Sniffing is the antagonistic maneuver. But what is very important, before you start to do any maneuvers, wait and see. Because what is neurophysiologists will always explain, you should wait until you have a zero line of any signals. To get a zero line in the TA muscle is almost impossible. You have a lot of background noise, and uh, if the patient is very tense and anxious, you might have already activation, although he or she seems to be <laughs> relaxed. But then you have to give time to wait, and sometimes, only sometimes, you can reach the zero line. This is just an example. We use a three-channel EMG uh, device. Uh, the line represents the LMG signal uh, from the voice of the examiner or of the patient. And the third uh, one uh, is the movement uh, of the chest to consider the breathing. Okay. Type of documentation. Why? Because very often we do the re-evaluation offline. And then you know when the patient was voicing or phonating, when the, uh, the patient was doing sniff maneuvers. If you just take the, the um, documentation from the neurologist, where you just follow the EMG signal, you do not know afterwards what was the maneuver. So that's why we use a three-channel uh, device. Few more signals, I always recommend don't go directly to the damaged site in a unilateral vocal cord paralysis, for instance. Always start with the uh, with the laryngostroboscopically uh, stroboscopically uh, working site. So if you have the feeling that like, like here, uh -huh. yes, my uh -huh. 
Nung ma ah. Ah. Yeah, so then you know the direction. You know the the, uh, the, the, the inside, the way, or the, the centimeters you inserted the needle in. And then you do the same in the opposite way to the paralyzed vocal cord. And what you have heard here is just listen to the background noise, listen to the insertion activity. As soon as you have insertion activity, you have to be in the muscle. And then I start always with the more moderate R. Uh, and if I have the feeling the, the patient is fine, then I try to go to the maximum phonation effort. And this is what we have to consider when we evaluate the density of the signal. We, if we say dense, it has to be maximum phonation activity. So, and, and on the other hand, <laughs> again, background noise. This is conductivity. And uh, uh, compared with the right side, then you see there is a decreased inference pattern. It is here in this case. Uh, Signal and uh, you don't see anything because I stimulate um, insertion potentials, then I can say it is silent. And what you also have heard. For synkinesis. And again, the multi side you have very tiny activation, but you are not activation the signal. You can also perform the laryngeal EMG in a tracheostomized patient. This is more complicated if you have a high tracheostoma then it's sometimes hard to reach the cricothyroid membrane. But I promise, with a little experience, you will reach also EMG interpretation in tracheostomized patients. Thank you.